Hello and welcome to Doom Does DVD and this is Disney Classics number 24, The Fox and the Hound. Now here we are entering a new era of Disney, although it's an era that doesn't really matter to anybody else, but we are now in the era of Disney films that were released during my lifetime. However, at two years of age this is not one I ever saw at the cinema nor is it one that I think I've ever actually seen ever. It's also one you don't really hear mentioned or discussed a lot, which leads me to kind of guess it's probably one that's not really worth mentioning or discussing a lot. The tagline of the film basically sums up everything I could expect from a Disney film with that title. A story of two friends who didn't know they were supposed to be enemies. Small print on the poster also says based on a book, but it's not one which I've ever heard of. Also on the poster we have a nice looking old lady who I'm going to presume is the owner of the dog, and a sort of angry looking farmer who I'm guessing probably doesn't want the fox on his land. And those things will create enough story conflict for the fox and the hound to go and have some kind of adventure to sort the situation out. And with that there's no real need for me to keep padding out this intro with pure speculation about a film I know nothing about, so let's just go ahead and watch it. Well, I quite enjoyed that. It was above average, but, you know, nothing spectacular. Which, to be honest, I think I've said about quite a few of these films so far. I need to think of something new to say. Although, as we move onward into the 90s, we're going to get more to the ones that I personally consider to be classics. But anyway, The Fox and the Hound, this is a fairly simple, traditional story about nature versus nurture. And it's a story that's been told many, many times. This one is, is quite a nice one, but it's not, you know, anything unique or revolutionary. It's got nice and interesting characters, and the film manages to make you care about them. Although there is a bit of a side plot about a woodpecker and his little bird friend trying to capture a caterpillar, which seems a bit unnecessary filler and padding to me. I guess you've got to fill the runtime with something, but that really didn't add much for me. Speaking of characters, we've got some known actors behind some of these voices, or at least known to me. Kirk Douglas, for example, and Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney is a name, though, that while highly familiar, once I looked him up I realised that, you know, I don't know why he's super familiar to me. None of his credits are, you know, particularly near and dear to my heart. Although I guess it's probably just the fact that he had such a expansive career with over 350 titles on his IMDb list. And also interestingly, the voice of the young hound is a 10-year-old Corey Feldman. I was slightly wrong with my story predictions. It turns out that the fox was raised by the old lady, that being necessary because his mother was killed by the dog of the neighbouring farmer. And so that's definitely a Disney trope at this point. We have yet another animal parent dying. We also have yet another wise old owl sort of looking after everything. So when the neighbouring farmer gets a new puppy to train as his next hunting dog, that puppy and the fox next door kind of become friends. And the first sort of act is, is you know, nice fun and adventure friends type thing. So they get to know each other over the summer, but then autumn comes and the hunter and his dogs go off on a hunting trip for a couple of seasons. So they're gone for autumn and winter, and the whole sort of second act while that happening kind of drags on a bit with not a lot really happening. Spring rolls around, the hunter and his dogs come back, and the fox and the hound seem way older than they should be for only half a year's time past. Obviously animals age faster than humans, but it feels like in terms of their anthropomorphism that they've gone from being kids to teenagers, which seems to have happened quite quickly. But that's a minor nitpick anyway. And obviously now the hound is all conflicted because his old friend is now supposed to be his prey. I'm not going to go full synopsis, but the fox has to go away and live in the woods like he should do rather than living on the farm, where obviously he meets a lady fox. But then the farmer and the dogs track them down for a final confrontation, which involves, oddly enough, a giant bear. And the whole bear bit, to me, seemed, you know, pretty violent for a U-rated film. 
But as you might expect, eventually the hunter gets trapped in his own traps and gets a taste of his own medicine and everything thing works out and everyone can live happily ever after. Because of course, this is Disney. Apparently in the book, the older dog dies, but in the film version, he just breaks his leg. But yeah, pretty well made. The animation is mostly really nice, but there are a couple of instances when the characters seem a bit out of focus again and not quite integrated with the background well. But that's only fairly minor. And speaking of animators, I mentioned in the intro that I felt like this was a new era of Disney, at least for me personally, but it turns out it's actually also the end of an era. Way back when Disney made Snow White, there were nine core animators, and they became known as Disney's nine old men. They were the key animators on basically everything Disney had released since then. All nine didn't work on everything, but some combination basically had a hand in every single release. And there were a few where all nine were involved, usually the big lavish ones like Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty. However, now it's 1981 and Disney have been doing this for 44 years. One of those nine old men is dead already, six of them have retired, and this is the last film that any of those nine ever worked on. Though technically one of them was still on staff for the next couple of films, but they didn't actually draw anything, they were just animation consultant. So this really is the bridge into the next generation of Disney animation. And so yeah, that was The Fox and the Hound. Pretty good and kept my attention. What are your thoughts on this one? Leave those in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next week with The Black Cauldron.